So hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So in this video I'm looking at 15 games on Evercade that I think are just unplayable. Now that could be down to a number of things such as poor emulation, poor controls or it's maybe just a really poor game. Without further ado, let's get stuck into the video. Okay, first game on the list is Night Driver from the Atari Collection 1. Um, now, interestingly, I think the emulation has actually got better in recent months from some of the updates that Blaze have been doing, but for me, this game doesn't really work. It's a really old, ancient game that looks really basic and doesn't control amazingly well. It's it's really one of those games that probably been better off not being on a collection. Um, I guess the idea is just to try and last as long as possible, try and manoeuvre your way through the, the, the road, so to speak, avoid the traffic. Um, and you've got a timer that's sort of ticking down in the top right hand corner of the screen. I mean, at times you can just about get past it, but it, it really doesn't work. It's one of those games that's dated extremely badly and it just is almost completely uncontrollable, thusly it's a bit unplayable. But obviously I've actually made quite a good effort in the video here, but yeah, it doesn't work. You can actually maybe just press the button, the accelerator so to speak, a little bit at a time to try and make progress but the time's constantly going down so it doesn't really work but for me this game's not one I would want to play more than a few times if that Okay, sticking with Atari Collection 1, we've got Yars Return, which was kind of a, I don't know, it's almost like a homebrew version or a remake almost, or a sort of a sequel to Yars Revenge, which I really enjoyed. I had Yars Revenge on my um, original Atari 2600 back in the day, I absolutely loved it, great fun, but this one just doesn't work, it seems a bit buggy. Um, it's a bit uncontrollable. You can't even go from one side of the screen to the other. So in the original, you could go out the top of the screen, come out the bottom. Um, and for me, this one just—it's just a bit messy, to be honest. I like what they were trying to do, but for me, it doesn't work, and it doesn't really deserve to be on this collection. It's nice that it's there, but at the same time, it's not playable. It's a bit of a mess for me. Okay, I know this one might be a little bit controversial, this is Clay Fighter um, on the Interplay collection, but for me, I really have never enjoyed this game. I played it back in the day on the Mega Drive, didn't like it then, I thought it was really limited in the moves you can actually do, there's only a couple of buttons, it just seemed like a bit of jump punch kit, it really was boring. I felt the difficult level was really high as well, I just never got anywhere with it, I didn't enjoy it. I mean it does look really good, there's a lot of good things about the game, there's nice speech samples, but for me, didn't enjoy it, couldn't play it, unplayable, just don't like it at all and I'm sorry if you do like this game. Okay, this is Weapon Lord on the Namco collection. I'm playing this through my handheld, obviously you can't play these on the VS. Um, and for me, this one looks amazing. There's a lot of things uh, nice about it, nice big sort of characters and um, yeah, it just doesn't play well. Even though it looks fantastic, there's a bit of a lag when you're actually fighting the character. You can see I've not even got one hit in the opponent there, it's just an absolute joke. I feel as if that lag has just stopped me from actually getting anywhere with the game. Um, the moves are a little bit limited as well, 
It's one of those games that should be good, but just doesn't work. Okay, this is almost Hero from the Mega Cat Collection 1. And I don't know, this is probably the only game I don't really like on this collection. Um, I obviously don't like Coffee Crisis either. Um, but anyway, this is the game I've chose. I just don't know what it is about this game. It just feels uncontrollable. I think it's obviously trying to be a little bit like um, River City Ransom, um, but it doesn't work. I feel the difficult level is far too high, and every time you sort of die, you get sent back to the beginning of the level again, and it's just one frustrating mess. Um, and it's very, obviously it's a NES version that's very, very glitchy. There are only like three characters on the screen, and you can see it's super glitchy. Thus, it just doesn't feel like you can play through this at all. There's no enjoyment there, and I feel as if, look, I'm going to die instantly, and I'm going to get sent all the way back to the start of the level again. It's just very frustrating. I just don't like playing this. It's unplayable for me. Okay, this is probably the easiest pick from the lot. This is Jim Powers from the Pico Collection 1. Um, and there's a lot to be said about this game that's good. It looks fantastic, great graphics, nice parallax scrolling going on there in the background, but it just doesn't work. It's completely unplayable because the, the bad guys basically are on you before you can actually see them. They take a few hits to actually die, so you're really going to die constantly, instantly, and there's absolutely very little that you can do about it. Thusly, this game is probably the most unplayable game on Evercade, arguably. I mean, there's obviously quite a lot in this list that I've got, but this one is just a nightmare. It should be good, it should be great, doesn't work. Terrible. So this is another easy pick. This is Jimmy Connors Tennis on the Atari Lynx collection. <laughs> this one is just a laugh. It's a joke. It's almost impossible to play if completely unplayable. I mean, it's unbelievable. You can take forever to actually even serve. The, the problem with this game is trying to actually return the ball. There is obviously an indicator there where the ball's going to land, but that doesn't make any difference. I think you're supposed to try and stand at the side of that or in the, the square, I don't really know but trying to return the ball is completely impossible this game is laughably unplayable um, and amazingly we've got another tennis game in this video on this collection that's pretty much the same and it's probably even worse than this one Fifteen, forty. Okay, so this is World Trophy Soccer on the Pico Collection 2. Now this one is one of those games you want to love. It looks terrific, the graphics are brilliant, but it just doesn't work. It's just completely unplayable. There's very little you can do. 
um, to sort of pass, shoot us. You feel really limited when you're playing it, and it is really, really difficult to actually keep the ball for any longer than a few seconds. Admittedly, you can actually get better through lots and lots and lots of practice, but it is unbelievably tough as nails. You probably want to dumb the difficulty down a little bit, but for me, this game has never been playable. It's been known as a few different um, names over the years. I had it on the Mega Drive, which was called... Manchester United Club Soccer or something and it's just basically the same game and it's, uh, even though it looked fantastic it doesn't work, it's unplayable there's far better games out there, football games that is that are much much better than this and sadly I don't think we have that many good football games on Evercade and this unfortunately is one of the really bad ones Okay, this is the other tennis game I was talking about. It's not in the Atari Lynx collection, so I got that wrong. This is on the Codemasters collection, and this is Tennis All-Stars. And probably, arguably, this is actually even worse than the Jimmy Connors Tennis. And this one seems really buggy. There's a lot of things not right with it at all. The fact is, you can't actually return the ball either. Um, and you... You know, trying to actually get a point or even get in the game is impossible. Even if you do manage to hit the ball, it's much like Jimmy Connors tennis. You have no idea where it's going. It could just go firing over the other side, to the side, way, way out. Um, and it's just a, a joke. The, the rules are all wrong in here. You can actually serve the ball while the other player's running back, which, like you can see here, is still running back. You can actually serve it. Um, so it's, this one's messed up. It really shouldn't be on here. And it's one of those games they should have just left it where it was and never brought it back. It's Awful. First second service. Game computer. Computer to serve. Fifteen love. Out. Thirty love. 40, love. OK, so this is Worms, the original Worms on the Mega Drive from the Worms collection. Now for me, I just think the controls are all messed up. And trying to actually start a game is like a mission in itself. Um, I just feel as if the buttons are the wrong way about. Hopefully I, I really should spend some time customising the buttons to my pref preferred layout. But for me, they don't work as in the default. I feel as if I just keep going back to this, the menu screen all the time. Um, I just keep mucking up. Um, and even worse, once you get into the game, it's really tough to actually see the worms. If you're playing this handheld, this game's unplayable. You can't make it out. You can't see a thing. Um, it's obviously better if you're playing on a large TV, on the VS, and you have to play it with friends. Otherwise, forget about it. It's really not worth the effort. Worms Armageddon on the cart from the PlayStation 1 is much, much better and more playable and more enjoyable. And even in this game, I've accidentally hit a button that completely sent me back to the main screen. No idea what happened. Thusly, this game is unplayable for me. Unplayable. Okay, this is Battle Lane Volume 5, um, and this one, obviously it's an arcade game, but even saying that, it is ridiculously hard. It's almost impossible to play through and get very far without completely dying. Progress is so limiting, it's completely unplayable for me. I really don't enjoy this game. It's one of those games you'll play for a few seconds, you'll die instantly, you'll die again, you'll die again, and you, a lot of the time you can't actually see um, the enemy fire at you, and it's really hard to make out, especially if you're playing on a handheld. Now, admittedly, if you're playing the original handheld and not in tatty mode, forget about it, it's unplayable. But if you're maybe playing in tatty mode, it might be a little bit improved, but it still is an impossibly difficult game that doesn't have much much enjoyment in it at all. For me, unplayable, unenjoyable, forget about it.
Okay, so this is Pong from the Atari Arcade Collection. And unfortunately for me, this game is just <laughs> almost impossible. Now, I have to admit, Blaze have actually made an improvement to the emulation. Um, I think when this originally came out, it was so overly sensitive um, trying to move the, the sort of bat, so to speak, that it really was completely and utterly impossibly and unplayable. But they have actually made some improvements and it is possible to actually bat the ball back on the odd occasion. But still, I find it just doesn't work for me. Um, this game needs like the original paddles or something or some kind of tracker ball to be able to play this properly. They have made massive improvements using the D-pad, but I think it's still almost impossible. It's very, very tricky to make head nor tail. It needs to be slowed down somewhat. It seems to be a little bit too fast. Uh, maybe it's the emulation, I don't know. But at the end of the day, I just don't enjoy it. It's not one of these games that I really want to play any more than a few seconds. It's not fun at all. Okay, so staying with Atari Arcade, this is Super Breakout. Now, Blaze have made changes to the emulation and it's definitely improved it. It's certainly more possible to hit the, the sort of ball up and try and break the blocks, but at the same time, I just feel it's still not quite right and thusly completely unplayable for me. This, just like Pong, this probably needs some kind of tracker ball or some kind of paddles that the original game came with on the Atari 2600. And I really loved this game back in the day, but on Avercade, for me, it just doesn't work. They've made some good improvements, but it still doesn't work. So probably no big surprise to see this game, Auto Racing from the Intellivision Collection 2. Now to actually get started in the game itself is an absolute mission and a half. Um, and you definitely need to refer to the manual and how to actually start the game properly. Um, and the manual doesn't even tell you all the information you need to know what type of car you should be driving. Um, and that does make a difference. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit of a pain to start. Um, and once you get started, it really doesn't matter too much. The car does actually go by itself and all you have to do is, <laughs> you know, all you have to do, it sounds simple, is control the car around the corner, pressing left and right and utilising the brake to try and make your way around. It, it really is tough as heck. Now... This could be an Evercade issue, or it could be the fact this game probably wasn't great even back on the Intellivision. Now, the Intellivision controller was completely different, had that little disc thing to control the car. Um, and on um, Evercade, I'm not saying, I just don't think it's emulated great. I think they've done a reasonable job, but for me, this game should have left um, on the shelf. It really is an unplayable mess. Unless you've got loads of patience and lots of it and play this time and time again. But at the same time, I'm not really sure why you would want to do that. It's not the greatest game at all. Okay, last game is Gelatinous and this is from Indie Heroes Collection 2 um, and if you've probably played it you know why this is here, it's a bit of a buggy mess, um, I feel as if this game definitely needs a little bit extra time um, testing and sort of fine tuning some of the gameplay mechanics because for me it just doesn't work, it's completely unplayable, the blob there just I don't know, there's no, not a lot of logic to this. Eventually through the, the game you do get some firepower and you get a jump button for example, but it just makes the game even more frustrating I think and yeah, it just doesn't work. This game, it just needed a little bit of extra love and care before it even got released, which is a shame. I think there's a good game to be had here, but as it stands, I just don't enjoy it and it's an unplayable mess.
So that's my picks for the most unplayable games on Evercade. Please feel free to comment and let me know if you completely disagree or there's other games that you think should be on this list. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you again in the next one. Bye for now. Bye.